I'm back at Demolition Ranch today. Today we're gonna tie rebar. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to install our six mil poly. This is our moisture barrier. Concrete is porous, so there's always moisture under the concrete, in the ground, okay? The, the ground is always gonna be sucking moisture from all around. So, to prevent moisture from coming from the ground into the slab, we use this six mil poly, which is our moisture barrier or vapor barrier. So that's the first thing that gets done. So there's a million different ways to tie rebar. These guys do it inside. They will tie the rebar inside, including the beams. Oftentimes people do it outside, but again, your preference. And uh, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take these stakes and they're gonna push it up against the form and they're gonna tie wire to the outside stake and they're just gonna keep it level, kind of like they're doing on the interior beams. And that's where they're gonna start hanging the rebar off of, you'll see. So the number five rebar goes first. Those go in the footings or in the beams, however you guys wanna, <laughs> want me to say it, cause I got upset last time. So we'll call them footings this time, how about that? So rebar is pretty technical. Like I said, everybody does it a different way. So maybe somebody will see this method and learn something. Uh, I'm sure some will criticize it, <laughs> believe it or not. That's YouTube. Yeah. But if anybody will learn something, that's great. All right, now we're gonna mark where the stirrups are gonna be. So here's another thing, keep the rebar away from the forms. Rebar should never touch the forms or the ground, or the plastic, or anything. If rebar is touching anything, then you cannot get concrete around it. So pretty much that renders rebar useless. So uh, oftentimes people leave the rebar on the ground. Don't do that. You, you have to tear it up or break it up, but we'll show you how to do that as well. But again, super important, make sure rebar doesn't touch anything. You guys can see what's going on here. They have all the rebar here suspended by wood stakes. They have it hooked only on two bars. They're gonna go all the way around and tie all those stirrups to those top bars. We use bricks to hold up the uh, rebar. You can use uh, chairs. They, they sell what's called a plastic chair or rebar chair. Uh, I prefer brick. It has to be a solid brick though. You can't use just regular brick. Uh, engineers will not approve the use of a conventional regular brick. So it has to be these uh, they call this utility brick. So after he's got this uh, stirrup hook, and he just drops the two bars in the middle into the beam or the footing. Well, this is real speed. This is not being sped up in any way. All right, so now he's got the stirrups tied on top. Now they're gonna do the bottom. All right, so now they got all the beams tied. They went ahead and put these forms on as well. So now they're tying the rebar at one foot increments. They're tying it to the beam. All right, so the rebars are 20 feet long, like I said, the slab is 32, so the splice is right here. So they have about six feet or so hanging over. So they're gonna do that to all the rebars first, and then they're gonna come with a saw and just cut them all. All right, so now that they tied the rebar one way, now they're laying out the rebar going the other way. So now that they have it all laid out, they're gonna tie, but only gonna tie to 50%. How do you do that? Well, you tie this one, skip that one, tie that one, skip the next one, and so on and so forth the whole way. All right, so as you guys saw, they just tied this row right here. So now they're gonna start again. Typically, they would just turn around and go from here that way, but I'm here trying to film, so I'm kinda 
ruining their uh, flow but anyway <laughs> that's how that works so like i said they're only tying 50 percent of the mat meaning they they tie one they skip the next one tie one they skip the next one so what they do is they tie, they they take two then one two one two one and that's how you end up with 50 percent all right so on the last video we did not get the 10,000 likes so matt was not going to work today however i said hey man give us give us a break <laughs> Get in there so he's gonna get in there tie some rebar and uh we'll see how it goes put the wire in like that bend it yeah okay and then you're doing a cross mm -hmm. like this and then this one bottom and that one there you go there you go and, and now you tighten it oh we tighten it again yeah like all right now now push it down yeah Let's see, you, you, you got to turn around and go go forward. Okay. He did good enough. Más o menos. Más o menos. All right. So, Rafa, do it right here so I can see. Do one slow. Cut it. Now do one at regular speed. Huh? Yeah. See? That's fast. Okay. Okay. You don't need to do it like two times, you know. Okay. Yep. 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 Fácil. <laughs> now you gotta turn around and go forward. There you go. Now you're a rod buster. That's what they're called. Rod busters. What is that? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's what they call rebar guy. Rod busters. I don't know if I would go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm busting any rods. <laughs> it's kind of hard right to hold them like that. Yeah. That's what I try to. Yeah, it is weird. Would you hire me again? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why. You, see, you're working for free today because you didn't get your likes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually a fair, a fair trade to that's do. True. <laughs> I'm gonna guess you probably won't hire me for doing rebar. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you got to do the one on the right. What's this one? No, no, the other one. No. Oh, that one? No, right. That? That one. That one's missing. No, I was here though. I know. See, that one? I didn't mess this one up. Someone else did. No. Listen. This was Francisco. <laughs> that one right there you're supposed to do. Yeah. Then don't do that one. I know. That one needs to be done. But I was going down the line. Yeah, but you're supposed to do three. Oh. Two, one, two, one. He two. didn't tell me that. Ah, that's what. See, I'm, that's I've what. I've only been doing two the whole way. <laughs> oh, that's see, right. This, this see, this one's not tight at all. There yeah. you go. You're supposed to be down doing that one. I quit. <laughs> no, you can't quit. You're, <laughs> You know why you can't quit? Because you're fired. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> Do I get unemployment? There you go. Done. Win. <laughs> Do I get paid? Sure. Yeah, so they don't have like a little gun you can just go. They do have a gun, but it's slower than that. It's slower? I have one. I have something fast. All right, so obviously my guys use pliers and reel. Uh, they also make a little deal that you can kind of twist around. That's kind of slower than this. And around here, if you're using a twisty, you are considered an amateur, so FYI. <laughs> so, yes, I know a lot of you are probably going to ask me if I know about that. Yes, we know about that. It's the, uh, again, around here is the amateur way to do it. This is the pro way. Pliers and reel. So I actually bought a machine to tie rebar before, and these guys were way faster than me with the machine. So we gave it up. All right, so now we have the rebar all tied up. Now we're going to use brick to chair the rebar up. Because like I said earlier, you do not want the rebar touching anything. So do not leave it sitting on the ground. That brick is about two inches thick. The slab is four inches thick. That's gonna put the rebar right in the middle of the slab, exactly where you want it. So what we do is we take those bricks and we break them into three pieces. And we use them as chairs. They make concrete chairs or rebar chairs that we can use the plastic uh, personally I don't like them but 
a lot of people use them they're fine I prefer brick all right so let me show you how they're doing the bricks this is 3A3 bar so they put a brick in they skip three rows they put another one skip three rows put another one in and then they go the other way skip three rows put a brick in and so on and so forth if you were doing uh, number four rebar like like half inch rebar you could skip more than three rows it's just stiffer again the the entire plan is to keep this rebar off the ground all right so now that all the rebar is tied they're pulling all the stakes out of course they put all the bricks in first so now when they take the stakes out the rebar just sits on the bricks they're about to take that one out let's pull it out that's what the bricks look like inside the beam supporting the rebar all right, so now that we have all the rebar tied, we're doing the headers. Right here is going to be the, the, I guess you can say the living quarters, the inside. Out here we have a 10-foot porch, now you can see it. And this concrete and that concrete are on different levels. So this one's going to be inch and a half higher than this one, so that's why we need these header boards. So when we pour the concrete, we're going to pour this section first. Once it sets up, we remove the headers, and then we pour the rest of it inch and a half down it's gonna have an inch and a half step down and then it's gonna slope away same thing in the back so that's what they're doing right now those are called header boards and on the side we have what's called the tin lug so you guys can see the forms are a bit higher than they need to be so we have that's where we do our tin lug the tin lug right there it's going to allow the uh, the tin on the metal building to sit down into that area it's almost like a brick lug inch and a half and then so the metal is going to sit lower than the finished floor that way in case water goes below the metal it is not going to go inside the the house so that's how that's done these are the anchor plates that are going to be embedded into the concrete three quarter inch rods half inch plate so it gets embedded in the concrete like this and when the metal building guys show up they will weld their pipes right onto here their columns so we're gonna have one in each corner and two out on the front porch they have their laser set up to make sure all those headers are level with uh, with the rest of the forms all right so this is how we put the plates in we just uh, we actually put some nails under the plate there on the form and then we just tie a wire to a nail up here that just holds the plate in place when we pour we'll pull that wire out pull the nail out and just kind of set the uh, the plate in the concrete you actually do not want to leave them sitting there loose on the concrete because they will actually sink down and once they go down into the concrete they are a nightmare to pull out the other thing you want to do is you want to make enough room in the rebar so that the legs go down uh, past the rebar if you do not make room here for the legs and a lot of times people like to wet set these plates well they become really really hard especially if there's rebar in the way and you already poured concrete it's really hard to put them in so plan ahead we always like to do them ahead of time for that reason all right so that's how we do the rebar the headers and the anchor plates so now it's ready to pour so next episode we pour concrete all right we'll see you guys next time we are texas barn aluminiums Whoops.